Hello and welcome to The Sports Factor on ABC Radio National. I'm Mick O'Regan and welcome especially to our first program for the new year. Well, the past month or so may have been a languid time for many people on holidays, but the sporting world has been in an almost perpetual state of uproar. This week, one of the leading broadsheet newspapers devoted consecutive front-page banner headlines to the crisis at the heart of cricket. And everyone from the bloke in the bank queue to the Governor-General have had their two bobs worth in what's become an acrimonious national debate. All you have to do is, is take up the M in monkey, and what you end up with is Marky. And, and Ma literally means mother, and Ki literally means from or of, or in or whatever, you know. It can mean a whole heap of things. So literally it, it refers to someone who has some sort of a sexual relationship with their mother. It's an obscenity, but it's an obscenity that people use all the time. While we should be playing the game tough and hard and all that sort of thing, I think there's also a need to really take care of the fundamental courtesies and good manners because good manners has such a, on the ground and off the ground, has such a big impact on our other cricketing uh, friends around the world, India and elsewhere. And similarly, if, if we go a bit the other way, that can also have a, a nugatory effect. And uh, I think we've got to have a little bit of a look at this. Major General Michael Jeffrey, and before him, lawyer, blogger and cricket fan, Irfan Yusuf. So, is this the crisis that cricket had to have? And is there a potential silver lining in the form of a clarifying public discussion? Fairfax journalist and ABC cricket commentator Peter Roebuck has been at the eye of the storm. And Debbie Sims, manager of the Australian Institute of Sports Ethics Unit, is well versed in all of these issues. They join me to discuss the problem and maybe even a possible solution. Peter Roebuck and Debbie Sims, welcome to The Sports Factor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Peter Roebuck, to begin with you, your, your column of January the 8th, Peter, as you would well be aware, created a, a great deal of controversy when you basically argued that in an, an article titled Arrogant Ponting Must Be Fired, that the captain of the Australian cricket team didn't deserve his position because of the way he had conducted himself and led the team. Just to begin this conversation, can I get you to, to take me into your thought process when you, when you sat down to write that article? What were you, what were you thinking? Bill O'Reilly was my mentor, the great former Australian leg spinner and uh, wonderful writer subsequently. He told me that you get one crack at the Australian captain in your career, so time it well. I felt that the events of the SCG test match warranted that sort of crack uh, because I thought there was bad blood in the game. I thought the Australians were at least partly to blame, if not mostly to blame for it notwithstanding the Harbour Jan episode. Um, I think that must go towards the leadership of the team. My aim was not so much to uh, relieve the incumbent of his duties, I didn't appoint him, um, as to provoke uh, uh, a powerful debate about how Australians want their team to play. In other words, to take the Australian cricket team and captain away from Cricket Australia, away from the internal community that, that will backslap endlessly, and into the, the, the greater Australia out there and also the greater world out there that it must join. So it was a very calculated move, if you like, to provoke the debate. I, I was then rather overwhelmed by the debate, I might say. Um, it clearly touched a nerve. It wasn't just that article. A lot of people felt the same as I did, a great emptiness on leaving the ground. And, and Il Kumblai was the main factor in the debate because he came out and accused the Australians essentially of, of bad sportsmanship. And the rest, well, you know the rest. Well, indeed, and that raises a fundamental question of today's sports factor, of basically in, in this era of highly competitive, often professional sport, has the very idea of what it is to be a good sport changed? Debbie Sims, you're the person behind the Essence of Sport document produced by the Australian Institute of Sport. I know this is a hard question, but is there? can you encapsulate what it means to be a good sport? I think basically it comes down to respect. Respect for your opponent, uh, respect for the official's decision. And I think the other word that I would look at is um, graciousness. You know, graciousness not only when you win but also when you lose. When I look back at, at the sporting heroes that I most admire, those have all had a level of humility about them. And I think the athletes that 
I perhaps admire for their sporting ability, but perhaps don't admire them for their on or off field behaviour are those that perhaps have a level of arrogance. And um, I think we can see that across a range of sports, not just in cricket. Right, now there used to be a sort of terrible you know, bumper sticker that said something along the lines of, it's hard to be humble when you're as good as me. Uh, Peter Roebuck, do you think that it's almost as if that terrible bumper sticker has become manifest in the conduct of, of a lot of Australian sports people? I think some. Uh, I don't say a lot. There is always a feeling that Australian sporting teams hunt as a pack, and I think the reason for that is historic. This is a remote, distant island from a t- in a, on a tough continent full of fires and droughts, you know that well enough, uh, and floods. It breeds tough people, it breeds tough attitudes, it breeds directness because of its historical uh, associations. There's no, been no aristocracy here. So it breeds many things that I like, uh, but also it, it, it breeds that aggression, and uh, doubling the fact that it still feels it's a new country. What I feel about the SCG Test Match was that it was the last statement of that country, because Australia is saying, OK, we, we sort of got over that, really. This sort of outburst of, of nationalism that began in the 1970s when this country freed itself from uh, uh, English petticoats in theatre, in, 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 in comedy, in so many areas, politics, in so many areas, it freed itself from that. Subsequent to that, for 30 years, there's been this great breast-beating tradition, chest-thumping tradition in Australian sport, in some Australian sport, of course, not all of them. And that, I think, I, I saw the SCG test match as basically the last statement of that, and I almost was challenging Australia to say, well, we've sort of done that. We've, you know, we've, we, we've established ourselves as, as a proud and independent nation now. And I think what happened at the SCG was, was, was partly that Australia regressed, because it's trying to move past that, I believe, but that also that India uh, started playing the old Australia, that it too is now establishing itself as a proud and independent nation. And those two, like two big bulls at each other, they came. There only used to be one bull in this paddock, you know, and now there's two. And that's what happened there. So the Australians, I would submit, are trying to move on a little bit. They've made some efforts in that regard. The Indians are determined to establish their, uh, their right to the paddock as well. And so they're now playing as they think... Australia has always played. Now, now I'm interested in in your reference to the 1970s because uh, many people would see that as a critical decade in in changing cricket, almost from a a civilised pastime, you know, a a leisure time uh, occupation, to when it really became professional. People stopped playing cricket on Saturdays away from their work and they started to go to work at cricket. Do you think, Peter, that commercialisation of the sport has changed some of the civilities within it? Uh, I think temporarily, and not all of them, I think they can be got back. I think they were got back to some extent in the, in the next two test matches after Sydney. In Perth and Adelaide, I didn't see anything untoward. There's always going to be a little bit of hot blood on the field, but there shouldn't be bad blood. Um, but let's not denigrate the 70s. This was a fine period. Uh, was previous to that, sportsmen were, were in the gutter after the game half the time. And also, I... I think the assertion of Australian individuality that came in the 70s is a very healthy thing. I mean, finally, Australia will eventually get its own head of state when it plucks up the confidence. It's still not there. Um, And I I saw the 1970s as the start of that. Uh, The the professional era, I think, was inevitable. I think healthy. It isn't always uh, 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 wine and roses, but I think it's got more good than bad. Um, And the assertion of nationalism, I also think, was healthy. But I think now we've got to find a way past all of that and say, OK, that's been done. Now what are we going to do? Right, but that notion, Peter, of, of sport being a, a marker of national or cultural identity, do, do you hold with that? Do, do we draw something from the behaviour of the Australian cricket team that is somehow indicative of what it is to be Australian? Oh, absolutely. Of course it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's one of the ways that Australia as a nation expresses itself. It's not the only way. But it's one of the ways, it's certainly one of the ways we've viewed around the world. Again, it's not the only way, but it's one of the most ostentatious ways and therefore reasonably important. And, you know, you go to a new school and you will see that school marking out its own territory. And often sport is a means of doing that, to showing what you can do to the world. And, and I think that this is a little bit what's happened in, in the great tradition of Australian sport. Um, and it has been a great tradition. But I think that uh, uh, you must get to a point where, where that's been, that, that point has been made. But I, I would have thought this whole debate that we've seen, uh, with all the vast correspondence, I mean, something was unleashed after, after uh, the SCG test match, that we need the thinkers and the sociologists and the politicians, uh, political thinkers anyway, and theorists, to, to tell us about on both sides of the, uh, of the debate, from India and here, because of, sh- of course it told us something about the state of our nations.